We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is News Break for Tuesday, March 21st. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. You can catch News Break weekdays at 7 a.m. Watch it at djournal.com, Facebook, YouTube, or on the Daily Journal's mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. Going to take a quick look at news, sports, and weather for Northeast Mississippi. Let's start with the weather underground forecast for today. Going to have clear skies, a high of 83 degrees, a low of 57, just a 10% chance of rain. Three-day outlook for Wednesday overcast with a high of 61, low of 48, 20% chance of rain. Warms back up again on Thursday, partly cloudy with a high of 74, low of 53, 10% chance of rain. And Friday, overcast with a high of 71, low of 61, and a 10% chance of rain. Let's take a look now at some of the top stories in the Daily Journal and djournal.com for this Tuesday. Come Veterans Day this fall, there will be a smaller version of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Tupelo. There was a ceremonial groundbreaking Monday, and work on the wall is expected to begin today. The, this memorial will be 60% the size of the official monument in Washington, D.C. The simple black granite V will stand a little over six feet tall, with a berm behind the wall so that they are only partially underground. Rex Moody, who is the president of the Vietnam Veterans of America Tupelo chapter, said this memorial means a lot to Vietnam veterans and will mean a lot to the city. He called it a healing wall. The idea for the memorial came up in 2001 when a traveling replica visited Itawamba Community College in Fulton. The Vietnam Replica Wall Committee started raising funds about 10 years later. The group collected about $250,000 and the city of Tupelo donated around $150,000 for the land at Veterans Park, a parking lot, and in-kind services. Long-awaited state funding covered the rest of the cost when $750,000 in bond money was earmarked for the project. Local officials believe the memorial could become a tourist attraction. Pulitzer Prize winning author and presidential historian John Meacham will deliver the University of Mississippi's commencement address on May the 13th. Meacham is the former editor of Newsweek and is a contributor to Time and to the New York Times Book Review. He will speak to graduates and their families at 9 a.m. University Chancellor Jeffrey Vitter said it is a tremendous honor for the university to have Meacham on campus for such an important event. Meacham is known for his great depth of knowledge on current affairs, politics, and religion. He has written numerous New York Times bestsellers and won the Pulitzer Prize in 2009 for American Lion, Andrew Jackson in the White House. His recent presidential biography on George H.W. Bush debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Some 6th graders at H.W. Byers Middle School in Holly Springs are looking to make school buildings safer for students, teachers, and staff. A team of five students is competing in the Lexus Eco Challenge, a national environmental challenge competition through Lexus and Scholastic. The team, called the Monoxide Mavericks, recently won first place in the Southern Division of the competition and was awarded $10,000. They now have a chance to win $30,000 in the final round of the challenge, and the results should be known soon. The group's teacher advisor, Melissa Corey, said the students chose carbon monoxide awareness as their challenge because their school had a leak in 2010 which sickened some cafeteria workers and closed the school. The students discovered Mississippi currently does not have any law requiring schools to have carbon monoxide detectors. Throughout the competition, students did research, wrote letters to elected officials, and circulated petitions in Holly Springs that call for the passage of a law requiring the detectors in school and daycare buildings. They then sent the petitions to their legislators. Corey said the team has received a commitment from Mississippi Speaker of the House Philip Gunn to pursue legislation related to carbon monoxide safety in schools next session. And in sports, Ole Miss is one win away from New York. The Rebels host Georgia Tech tonight in the quarterfinals of the National Invitation Tournament. Tip-off at the Pavilion is scheduled for 8 o'clock and the game will be televised by ESPN. The winner of tonight's game advances to the Final Four, which will be played at Madison Square Garden in New York City. 
The Rebels got to this point by upsetting number one seed Syracuse on the road Saturday. Terrence Davis scored 30 points and Ole Miss shot 45.5% from three-point range. Georgia Tech, which is led by former Memphis coach Josh Pastner, enters tonight's game with a 19-15 record. The Yellow Jackets have four starters averaging double figures in scoring, paced by Josh Okogie's 15.8 points per game. Ole Miss has advanced to the NIT semifinals twice in 2008 and 2010. And that's news break for this Tuesday. We do want to remind you to check out a webcast we produce here at the Daily Journal. Capital View with Capital Bureau Chief Bobby Harrison coming to you every Monday live around 2 p.m. at djournal.com as Bobby breaks down what's going on in the state legislature. And on this past episode, he talked about the Medicaid budget shortfall, public education, and the state flag issue. All the stories I talked about today you can find in your Daily Journal or at djournal.com. We're on Twitter at djournal now. Give our Facebook page a like as well. That's it for news break on this Tuesday. I'm Brad Locke. We'll see you next time.